These ogres are sweet. What? Yes, I know. There's doggies in the box, too. <sighs> okay, we'll paint a doggy. For the last couple of years, Games Workshop has really pumped up the number of new models it's released. And we all have personal aesthetic preferences to models or factions that appeal to us. But there's one thing I think we can all agree on. Little miniature animals are great. Cute animals, vicious animals, derpy animals. You can't go wrong. But painting miniature animals has its own set of challenges. Lately, I've felt like I've started to understand how to tackle some of these challenges, so let's walk through it together on this wonderful hound. This doggo is for my Golden Demon entry this year, my Cities of Sigmar unit entry. And while I'll be painting it to the best of my ability today because it's for Golden Demon, the basic steps that we're gonna go over are universal, whether you wanna paint this dog in 50 hours or 45 minutes. We start the same way for any animal. Simple base colors for the fur or hide of our beast. I'm mixing in a bit of dark purple to each of my base colors, so these colors will be slightly darker than their true mid-tone. That dark purple is a universal shadow color that I'm using across everything on the unit to create a sense of warm ambient light. But the color you use isn't as important as the fact that this first layer is slightly darker than we want the true fur color to be. One of the trickiest parts of painting animal fur or hide is the way it changes colors across the surface. Sometimes it's a very gradual color change and other times it's quite abrupt. Sometimes there's a pattern on the fur. Sometimes the paws or face are drastically different colors. Approaching all this nuance and color change over a large organic surface that doesn't have clean edges is daunting. So to keep from getting overwhelmed, I just start by blocking out these general colors at the very beginning. I can smooth out the transitions and add more subtlety later, but it's so much faster and easier for me to process if I start with the basic colors at the very beginning. Now, some of you regular viewers may notice that today's painting footage looks a little bit different than normal. That's because I've invested in a fancy new camera and it's gonna take me a little while to get that all dialed in, so I appreciate your patience. And I definitely have to thank my amazing patrons for improvements to the channel like this. It's because of your support that I can reinvest in new gear to hopefully make better videos. Once I've gotten the basic colors in place, I thin down those same colors with a bit of water and try to smooth out the transitions. This is one of those steps that you can cut or just rush through with one pass if you don't wanna spend a lot of time on this paint job. Later steps will smooth out our fur even more, so don't worry about perfection here. And if I'm being perfectly honest with you, this is one of the biggest struggles I have in miniature painting. I really think that if I don't make every step look as perfect as I can, sooner or later, it's gonna mean the whole paint job is garbage, and that's just not how it works. And I do this even on fast paint jobs. And of course, without fail, I'll end up painting over much of what I've struggled through in the next steps anyway. I really think that about 30% of the time I spend painting a model is wasted time. And I kick myself every time I realize this. Now, I'm not saying rush through your paint jobs, but it's important to remind ourselves that even award-winning paint jobs don't look award-winning at every step of the process. Really, I'm trying to just remind myself of this more than impart any kind of wisdom to you. Just go through the steps, John, and you'll pull it all together at the end. Before I move on to the next steps, I want to block in the black head and ears. And it's important to note that I'm not using pure black here. If I do, I'll have no direction to go but up. And I want to get a pure black into the shadows later. And that's not gonna show unless I start with a dark gray now. Our next step is to build in some shadows into all the recessed areas by mixing a glaze with a lot of water and a little bit of our shadow color. Sometimes I'll even mix in just a touch of my base color as well so that shadow change isn't so abrupt. I find that by starting with the shadows, I can pick out the definition of all the interesting musculature. By putting in the darker areas now, I'll be more confident on where to place the highlights later. And I don't push the shadows too dark too quickly. I can go in with more glazes and push it darker as I see fit, but it's a lot more of a pain in the ass to fix something that I've already made too dark when I didn't actually want it that dark. 
I'm also adding a bit more shadows on the dog's right side as the light source will be coming in from his left. Just one glaze over that entire side of the model will pull it back enough to make this difference noticeable, but not dramatic. Now glazing in shadows may seem like a step that you should cut if you're trying to speed paint, but I do think that getting in some dark areas really punches the model even at the tabletop level. So if you want to do this but do it quickly, don't go with for such a thin glaze, maybe have it a little bit thicker and only go through with one or two passes. One of the tricky things about working with an animal hide or fur is that you really need to use a gentle touch when you're adding things like shadows compared to something like a Space Marine's arm. Armor. Think about it. They have nice defined plates where we can put in nice crisp black lines to define one segment of armor to the other. But we don't have that with all the gentle curves and muscles that come through an animal's hide. But with a bit of practice, us understanding how to add shadows for something like an animal will really translate well to other things we paint all the time, like cloaks and robes. Our next step is the best step. It's the step that made me fall in love with painting fur. We are gonna build up volumes and all the texture that comes with fur. And we're not gonna worry about super smooth transitions from one color to the other, because all we're gonna do is paint tiny lines to represent the fur. Now, whenever I do this, I make sure I'm using a paintbrush that's got a nice, sharp tip. I use two parts water to one part paint for this step because I don't want the fur that I'm painting on to be fully opaque. The fur needs to slightly fade into the colors beneath it. And as we slowly build up layers over the area, we want those brighter fur textures to start to show. And I know that sounds like this is gonna take a long time, but really, it's important to note we're not actually painting over everything here. We're not adding fur texture to everything. We're only doing it on those small areas that we wanna build up the highlights. The first layers that I do with this are just my pure base color. But because we didn't add any of that dark purple that we used on our initial base layers, it's boosting the brightness just enough to tell a difference. Today's video is brought to us by Warhammer 40,000 Tacticus. Tacticus is the definitive tactical mobile game for Warhammer 40k, where you can collect and upgrade over 60 Warhammer 40k champions in quick battles on the go. I've been a sucker for Tactics games since Final Fantasy Tactics on the original PlayStation, and Tacticus really does an amazing job of combining strategy with a wide array of factions and characters from the 40k universe. I also love that there's always new factions and heroes being released, and because I've really enjoyed how some of the factions play, I'm actually considering starting a new army for the tabletop. Orcs. I'm definitely talking about orcs. So use the QR code on your screen or my link down in the video description to download Warhammer 40k Tacticus for free. And all players, new or existing, can use code NINJON40K in the game settings menu for a surprise gift. So download Tacticus for free now, and who knows, it may just end up being your new favorite pastime while sitting on the toilet. Now, how many layers do I paint up in any section when I'm building the highlights? Well, I use two factors to determine that. First and foremost, how much time do I want to spend? If I want to get this done quickly, I'm just gonna jump up to brighter colors faster. My final product will be less smooth and realistic, but it will still look so much better and so much truer to real fur than any other approach that I've tried. And second, the lighter the color of the fur, the more layers I add to go brighter. And the reason behind that is, if I'm painting a dark brown or a black fur, it won't end up reading as that true dark color if I'm building up too bright on the highlights. But a lighter fur, like the almost cream colored fur on our poochie here, needs to show an almost true white nature where the light hits it directly. I mix in more and more ivory to my base color until we get those smallest upturn areas to sell that the fur is an off-white color. One of the reasons why I really enjoy painting fur is it's so relaxing. I'm not worried about perfection. I'm not worried about smooth layers. All I'm really kind of thinking about is making sure that each hair that I'm painting on is going in the right direction. And while I was painting this dog, I spent a lot of time looking down at my own dog's fur to make sure I painted the fur direction correctly. Having your own dog really is the best kind of artistic reference.
Our final step to painting the fur is to bring back some of the richness of color in the fur with some glazes. I want this dog's fur to be richer and darker up near his back, and I kind of lost a bit of that colored richness in chestnut as I was building up the highlights. But it really is a simple thing to bring back, and because I'm using super thin glazes, we can still see that faint fur texture I painted underneath. And you can also use this step to pull back some areas that maybe you got too bright or where you misplaced some of your highlights. This is one of those magical mini painting moments where one brush stroke seems to fade away your mistakes or pull the model together to finally look realistic. Now, if I'm painting this model fast, I only glaze in my saturated colors here. I don't try to fix everything. Boosting our color here is so impactful for the final look of our model, so I do not want to understate how important this step is, especially compared to how little time this actually takes. Now we get to our pupper's face here and it's black, which is a lot different than everything else we've painted on the model. But because it's its face, we've got a lot more texture, more wrinkles, more details to work with. To start, I use pure black in the shadows to define the darkest parts of the face. And then I build up with a mid-tone gray to accentuate all our highlighted areas. A little tip I like to use here is that most animal noses are wet. So on the top of the nose, where it's hitting the light, make sure you put a little dot of pure white to show that reflection. The last thing I do is pull in a bit of a dark flesh tone around the lips and chin of our dog. This is where dog fur is thinnest, and we get to see a little bit of that cute pink skin tone underneath. Now, because our doggo is a doggo of war, it means that he's got some other bojangles that we're going to need to paint before we call him done. The most important part of painting all these little dangly bits is color choice. Since my doggy has mostly light colored fur, I want to paint the padding and the leather straps a dark color. If I went too light for my color choice for these details here, it would be hard to differentiate from the fur and these extra bits. So I want to help keep the details in this mini easy to read. I often find that the look of a warm reddish leather strap looks well on most minis and you can highlight up to a pure khaki with thin little lines that look like cracks and this is kind of the same process that we use for the fur. Anytime you can add purposeful texture, I really feel that it brings personality to your paint job. If I paint these belts too smooth and cleanly, they kind of end up looking like cloth anyway. Now there's a lot of little metal details on this doggo as well. He's got buckles, he's got little collar spikes, he's got little chain hooks, and we're gonna wanna get those done pretty quickly and that's actually not too difficult. You can start with any dark desaturated blue, maybe add in a little bit of black or a little bit of white to get the grayish blue you're looking for and then just base coat them all to give that nice blue steel look. It's really important here to keep a pure black line where the metals meet the leather belts and the fur, but don't be afraid to come back and refine those black lines as you work. As I build up just a couple layers of highlights, I mix in more and more ivory to that base mix that I've created, and I paint the upward facing edges and shinier bits. Because these are very small details, I'm not needing to worry about super smooth transitions here. The biggest key is selling this material as metal is the edge highlighting in the upward facing surfaces with a pure ivory or white so they really pop. It's a good rule of thumb that the brightest thing you paint on any model is the shine of that metal. That pure bright highlight there should be brighter than everything else. And if it's not, you can go back in and fix it. And with that, our doggo is done. And if you didn't enjoy the painting of this doggo, that just means that you hate animals and are a horrible human being. You know, the first few times I tried to paint animals in miniature, it was a really overwhelming and frustrating experience. And I think the main reason why is we don't have all those built-in guidelines like we do on our other little spacemen's. There aren't green pants to paint green, silver armor to paint silver, and so on. It feels a lot more like painting on a canvas, which for most of us is a pretty scary thing. And we've got to make the organic shapes of the model not only be colored correctly and deal with how the light reflects, but we also need to build in that texture. But with a little practice, trying it a few times, I actually found it was one of the most satisfying things in miniature painting for me. And I'm hoping if you give it a try, it will be for you too. Thanks for hanging out with me today. We are one step closer to getting this pretty heavy project complete. And I really appreciate all your support for subscribing to the channel, for joining me on the Ninja on Patreon, for picking up a shirt, or for using my links down below to get good deals on your hobby purchases. I really couldn't do this 
without your support. Now don't worry, I'll be back next week with another new video. And sometime between now and then, make sure you find time in your day to slay the gray.